So to uh, give everybody the names, this is uh, Goyo Garcia, otherwise known as Greg. Plays bass, known him for a long time. He's uh, Mr. Cool. And then we got Kirk over here. Uh, Kirk's from Jersey, and uh, he brings some East Coast magic to uh, the Delta Bombers. This is Chris. Uh, he's the lead singer and also the tallest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty obviously. And uh, I, I play guitar. My name's Andrew. Well, I don't wear no pants shoe. And I got no show of time. But when I sing the blues, babe, I have you sick. <laughs> well, like, the uh, Delta Bombers were formed, like, straight out of high school for us. We were um, 17, 18 years old. I found his ad on MySpace, and we got together, heard him playing guitar, and I figured that was it. So it worked out so far for the past seven years, so. It was quite by accident. We didn't know each other. Yeah. We got very lucky. Now we're stuck. Yeah, we're stuck together. Like an old married couple. <laughs> Uh, England's a very special place in that uh, it's the birthplace of the revival of rock and roll. So although rock and roll was technically born in the United States, England kind of revived it from death in the 70s. Uh, so it's very special to come here because even though the 70s are gone now, uh, that energy still exists uh, basically anywhere you go. Uh, you can ask someone in England, you know, what's rockabilly, what's rock and roll, and chances are they'll know it. Well, you can come home. Uh, so, we're on our third tour of the United Kingdom, it's going great. Uh, we're on the last leg, and we're going to come back next year during June. So, look out for us. Every day is just kind of embarrassing, of being on tour, because first off, we're in a, Pe we're in a Peugeot Five guys that is not meant to fit four Americans in. Uh, you know, we have four Americans, and we have a very fat Belgian named Tom. He's not really—he's not, he's not really fat. He's just large for a Belgian, right? He's not gonna like. That. So, <laughs> he's not gonna like that. Uh, sorry, Tom. All right. Uh, so basically, we're all squeezed in, and whenever we roll up to a gig, when when we, when we get out, it's like watching a marshmallow just kind of like pop out of a microwave bowl. So I mean, that's pretty much embarrassing enough. And we I all think. we all have to share beds most of the time. Right. So. Yeah. That, one of us sleeps on the floor, which doesn't really happen very often. All right, we try and keep it cheap, so we sleep yeah. with each other. <laughs> Just because we have to. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, every every day is embarrassing, but, you know, you, you do yeah. what you got to do. Pop a bear right behind us. Yeah. We sleep in one big pile like a bunch of kittens. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Count on me around. I love to play Japan. Japan has a really vibrant, intense rockabilly scene, but it's a very small one. So it's very hard for them to drop five or six thousand US dollars on flights for us to come. But if we do come, that country is going to have a fish sh shortage because I'm a massive sushi fan. Ah -hoo. Ah -hoo. Being on the road is kind of a, the climax for it all. You, you play all the shows in your local town, you write all the music and record, and that allows you to travel across the world. And once you do that, you've done it, but you have to bring something else to the table in order to do it again. We're mainly working on our next album. Uh, we're at the, in the middle of the writing phase and the, like, the pre-production phase. Um, really, when you come home from a tour, that's when it's time to really work because the big thing is over. Mm. And now it's time to start from scratch, write some new songs, write a new album, get a new tour together. So I look forward to going home, taking a few weeks off, and then all of a sudden I have all this work to do now. It's like the whole thing starts again. And it's kind of a daunting feeling, but it's a good feeling because you're kind of like starting over. I, I wouldn't say that we're a successful band in that I eat gas station sandwiches whenever we stop. <laughs> But stealing toilet paper <laughs> from the, from the <laughs> as far as a working rockabilly band that you know does play shows here and there and does make money here and there, you've got to play the shows, even if even if it's for free, even if it's for hundred dollars, even if it's five hundred miles away. It's all about making contacts and making friends and basically going there, being yourself and having a good time. 
when you do that, you win people over. And, mm. and as long as you're making the bar money and you're making the promoter money, the shows will come and eventually you're going to make money and everyone's happy. <laughs> My other thing I want to say to any, anybody else doing this is always be humble. Yeah. Because this is, yeah. this is all we know. This is what we do. When you have an ego, you make things yeah, hard on you. You make ego, things hard on ego yourself, system. you know. Um, I, I, no, nobody in this band has an ego, but you know we've worked with people who have, and they make things very difficult on, on themselves. So I mean, it's it's better to be an amazing band and have a tiny ego than to be a tiny band and have an incredible ego. The big the bigger bands that I have worked with have the smallest egos, even smaller than ours. Um, I mean, I don't want to drop names, but like people like Reverend Horton Heat and the Hives, I've worked directly with them. Their egos are minuscule, and it's it's really breathtaking and kind of like it puts you in awe. Like, wow, like these guys really get it, you know? So it's cool. Just to add to the humble thing, I mean, say hi to the sound guy, be nice to the guy at the door, be nice to the bartenders, be nice to the waitresses, you know? Everybody's go out of your way to say thank you to people <coughs> and just, yeah. Everyone comes together to put that show on. I wanna see everybody moving. The, the biggest struggle with hotel rooms is just chargers. You know, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen <laughs> funny car racers when like they're bumping each other. Like, as soon as we walk into the door, we try and pretend like we're not going for the bed with the charger by it. We're like, oh, hey, Greg. Uh, and we'll like sit down and, you know, there's, a, there's this one charger by the bed and everybody wants that spot. You can all just kind of feel the tension. We don't really bicker too much. Yeah. <laughs> that thing. We, we, we don't too. bicker. Yeah, we're it's more good. of a yeah. leg pulling <coughs> yeah. Yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I think the one is who's sitting in the middle of the seat in the Peugeot in the back. Uh, yeah, 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 we do kind of bicker about that. We do bicker about, yeah. and that in the front seat. We don't really fight, we just know that we have to argue over it, because if, if you've been screwed and you've been in the middle seat forever, like Greg always is, for six eventually you have to speak up for yourself, like, listen guys, it's time for me to go Can in the... Can get shotgun, man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So unfortunately, Greg is the one that's always in the middle, but we can't help it, you know. Well, actually, we could help it, but we just choose not to. Airplanes are tough. Yeah, I mean, and the thing about airplanes, Kirk is a is a bowman, so it doesn't matter where Kirk sits, he's doing this. He's bowing right now. <laughs> so if Kirk is in the middle, like everybody's just like, oh. Actually, both of them are right now. We're both like this. You gotta claim your space. <laughs> yeah. you, or yeah. you lose yeah. it. You know, you're gonna sit down and claim a territory. Right. Actually, when I was flying over here for the tour, I flew here without the guys. Me and this chick didn't speak to each other the whole time, but we were just politely fighting for that armrest. We were like, <laughs> shove over a little bit. <laughs> and I'd fall asleep and she'd have it back, but God, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
Nein. Thank you guys so very much. We are the Delta Bombers of Wild wow Records, Las Vegas, Nevada. Good night. All of us have kind of had to kindle really special relationships and friendships in order for them to work. Because I know my girlfriend is a very special person and not everyone can do what she does as far as just sitting at home and kind of politely waiting for me to come back. Yeah, same with my wife too and his wife. Yeah, yeah. Well, my yeah. wife has to take care of the dogs by herself right. when I'm not around. And I, I, her her I, responsibilities I, double. I pretty much do the Tinder thing so I don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a girlfriend everywhere yeah. for you. Yeah.